Hi, thanks for tuning in. I am Cecilia Manella and I hop on here every single week and share some tips and tricks around uh, improving your mental health wellness. So we're entering the month of October, um, which for many of us means, you know, fall and beautiful colors and Halloween. And for us, we want to focus on the word gratitude. Now, let me tell you why gratitude um, is such an important word for us and why we want to focus up on it in October. It has nothing to do with Thanksgiving, by the way. So gratitude is something that a lot of people just throw out there and just say, oh, you just need to be grateful, you just need to be grateful, um, which sometimes can come off as a little bit shaming, um, and we don't want that to be a shaming experience. Now, here's the value of gratitude, is that the current world that we live in is kind of bizarre if you really step out of it and really think about it it is kind of a strange time to be alive and it doesn't really have anything to do with the pandemic but more about our access to so many people now I want you to think in time of history in human history you have never had access to as many humans as we do right now so what this does it means that we have the ability to compare ourselves to literally billions of people on the planet We've never been able to do that. And what happens in comparison is that it takes us away from ourselves. It takes us away from our own value. Now, we like to say, um, just don't compare yourself to anyone. You're amazing and you're awesome. And that is all true. But what you need to understand is the brain is wired for comparison. Like it's wired to find things that are fearful. It's wired um, to compare itself to other people to measure success, to, to measure belonging. So how this used to work before the advent of the internet and all this comparison we've been able to do, so for thousands of years prior to now, um, as humans, we would compare ourselves to our local tribe. So we'd live in smaller communities and kind of tribal, tribal communities of maybe like a hundred people. And, you know, it started to slowly get bigger and bigger. But if you wanted to say, you know, be a baker, let's say you wanted to bake and this was like your calling and you're a part of this little community of like, say, 200 people. Then you would go and approach the baker of your community, of your little um, tribe um, and want to apprentice under that baker. And you would learn firsthand the skill set and all the techniques of that baker, the master baker, and you would apprentice for years and years and years and learn all the skills. And eventually what would happen is that you would be able to supersede the master or at least reach the level of the master. And what would happen is that, you know, you get more creative and you come up with new ideas and there would be a superseding of the baker. And that was the whole point of that master apprenticeship relationship was to share knowledge, share a skill set, and hopes that you would supersede the master in that way. Now, in those kind of uh, circumstances, comparing yourselves actually works. So comparing yourselves to a master means it can create some more drive, it can create more passion and dedication to something that you really want to hone in and grow. So if it is the skill of being a baker or a cobbler or whatever it is that it used to be. Um, so the comparison would happen just within our small community. And if you had connections to a different community, let's say if there was a, a community that was like three days horse rides away or whatever it was, then you would have the ability to compare yourself to that baker. So you would be really limited to geography around who you would compare yourself to. Now, just stay with me because I'm trying to make a point here. So. Our, the fact that our brain is wired for comparison makes sense in those circumstances because we can look at our, our geographic location and we um, have similar access to resources, um, similar geography, so nature. So it would make sense to compare ourselves to that community. Now, the advent of social media means that we can compare ourselves to anyone on the planet. We have no idea what we're being presented as truthful or not, or if it's been airbrushed or not, or if it's just a performance or a photo. We have no idea. The problem is, is our brain does not have the capacity to always engage in those filters to ask the question, is this real? Is this not real? We see an image and we automatically go to a place of comparison. So where does gratitude come in? I'm getting to it. Gratitude comes in to challenge this automatic reaction we have around comparison. Because what gratitude does, it actually grounds you into yourself, into your life, 
into the circumstances around you. You look at your own community and you what it does is it puts you in a space of being able to compare in this, again, healthier way around um, what is around me and how am I doing with the people around me. So community wise with same resources, um, geographic location and, and all these things, how am I doing in that sense? And gratitude really grounds you in these spaces. What it also does is it changes the chemistry of your brain. When we engage in gratitude, there's something that happens that we stop being super critical and we actually move into a different space um, and how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our life. Now, we are gonna spend the whole month talking about gratitude, and I want you to see it as this very actively engaged process and not this airy-fairy thing that we possibly see on social media or see on the internet as just being grateful as this thing that we just do once in a while and that's it, because there's a way to live into gratitude, to make it a daily practice, and to radically shift how you feel about your life. I'll see you next week.